Welcome to Resource Review from here at the Science Museum in London. We aim to provide a guide to new and interesting resources for schools. So, if you're looking for a fantastic piece of software to spend your spare e-learning credits on, or perhaps a piece of technology that will make a difference to your teaching in the classroom, we're here to help. Today, the focus of our attention will be Key Stage 2 Art. In today's resource review, we will be testing specialist crafts modelling materials, including mod rock, celluclay instant papier mache, and coloured air dry clay, and two simples animation software to animate. To help us come to some decision, we have the resource review panel made up of our experts, starting with Ray Barker from the British Educational Suppliers Association. We have Adrienne Jones, who's a freelance education consultant. And our subject expert, Dan China, who's a county art advisor for Buckinghamshire County Council. And Phil Beadle, who's Teacher of the Year 2004. Welcome to you all. Today we'll be looking at real resources being used in the classroom and the teachers involved are Lucy Thomas and Alexandra Mayer from St Mary of the Angel School in Westminster. Let's see how they got on. And with these resources we thought we'd all make an angel. I just want you to look at this uh, group of angels here. So, look at the colours. My name's Lucy Thomas. I am a senior teacher and a class teacher here at St Mary of the Angel School in Bayswater. Does anyone know what this is called? Yeah. We've been studying sculpturing for the past few weeks and doing lots of using different materials. And here we've been given a, bun a batch of three different types of materials. Mud rock, clay and um, papier-mâché. And the children behind me are experimenting and investigating with the different materials for um, their sculpture of an angel, hence St Mary the Angel's School. The children felt that the uh, mud rock was the best between the three. The clay, which I think would be better for years uh, one, two and three. And they've enjoyed using clay because they've made other things like jewellery using the clay. Well, I am doing a little bit slow. The papier-mâché had a great kinesthetic feel and it would be wonderful for nursery. I liked it a lot and I would actually thoroughly recommend that to be used because usually we rip the newspaper and get the paste and it's actually quite a messy process but this actual product was just a block of mesh paper which you just added water and um, it was very, very easy to make, mix up. You can do it the night before, wrap it in clean film and leave it for the children to use. So, I mean, that would be um, very beneficial for a school, definitely, instead of lots of newspapers and, and, and paper and glue. That was a good, good resource. So I had something I've never seen. And the um, mud rock would work, works very well with the older children throughout the school. OK, so put it round neatly, so I brush that. I was cutting a wing like this one and I was going to stick it down here so then I, then I could paper mesh it to it over like that. So I had it done here, I was just going to go like that to stick it and then I was just going to paper mesh it there. I'm using this, uh, this board as a head for the angel and poking it through all the way through to the top so then I can make a halo. About the modelling materials, um, first impressions? Well, you've got three very different processes that the teacher was trying to get involved with. You've got uh, using clay, which is a modelling material, uh, fairly small. You've got the use of uh, mod rock, which is a, a soft bandage, but you can make really large things with that. You can drape it over uh, the mesh as she was doing there. So you can make really quite large and light and quite strong sculpture there. And papier-mâché is again a modelling material which is light and fairly easy to use. It's nice that it comes in that pack because you can just add water and you don't have to leave it for four months soaking and, and getting festering in a bucket, which is what one used to do. So there are three different, different processes going on there. OK. Any, any other comments? Well, I've seen Modrock being used as part of a project about Britain since the 1930s. And the class are looking at 40s fashions. And they made sculpture models of characters from the 40s using mod rock. And, but interestingly, they didn't use mesh. They actually had some wire and they folded up newspaper and they wrapped the mod rock around that. And the thing about the mod rock is that it's so pliable and it falls in folds and you can actually get great detail from it. I've always had a problem between in, that would just display the walls mm. with the mesh, etc. And, and 
what did you describe them as armatures? Armatures, yes, um, I'm doing sculpture. Uh, you know, one could actually fill up the space between the children's head and the classroom, which seems to be the obvious place for angels mm. to be for me. Mm. Yes. I, I also felt about it that if you notice all the boys in there were utterly engaged and anything that promotes kinetic and tactile learning amongst uh, young school children, I'm, I'm all for. The magic word there was, I mean we've all been using it, is easy and you know these resources that make teachers life easy I think are magic um, and so here you've got you know teachers who used to, as you say, spend hours tearing up bits of paper or mm. putting plaster all over bandages and I mean teachers pay for that and I think in terms of cost you know it's it's a, it's a school decision do you want to pay for that product or do you want to use your time making that kind of thing because you say teachers always want to make good practical creative resources for their classroom for display Okay, for our next resource, we revisit St Mary of the Angels School in Westminster where Alexandra Mayer is working with a graphic software called To Animate. Our theme for this work is angels, okay? So you're going to make some pictures of, draw some pictures of angels using your tools that you're given on the software, okay? And for each slide, you're going to have to decide how you want the angel to change. Okay, when you're happy with what you've done, you can click on the slide that you want to move on to next. To animate allows the children's pictures and designs to be easily animated, bringing movement and life to their work. Developed by Too Simple, the children are using To Animate to make their drawings of angels move. This morning we used To Animate, um, which is a software um, for graphic, a graphics program. And what I asked the children to do was a follow-up lesson from uh, a previous one that we'd done in the week, um, drawing an angel. And in each slide, the children were asked to change the angel. And they were asked to change the angel either with colour or effects or movement um, in the th four slides. I think the advantages are it's very child friendly and it um, allows the children to be very creative. Um, the tools are fairly basic for this age range and ability um, so I would I think that really it's a more key of a key stage one package. Um, although my children got a lot out of it this morning um, and they had a free reign with the colours and so on, they really used, enjoyed using the different tools. The disadvantage were that it was fairly limited in terms of colours and shading that children could use. So those kind of areas could have been extended really. I like the way that when you put your mouse on a certain graphic it explained what it would be used for so that helped them. Yeah. I would say in Key Stage 1 it would relate very well to the ICT scheme of work. For Key Stage 2, possibly not. So if it could be used creatively to, in, with other, in other areas and, and linked to other areas of the curriculum, then that would, that would work quite well, yes. And then if you want to go back, you can just click on Stop. OK. Remember, when you're ready to, you're looking for the picture at the top on your toolbar, which is half a half a man's face and half a tiger's face. Can you see that, Kaya? Yeah? Are you ready to use, are you ready to use that one? Okay, good. So, oh, you've done it already. Excellent. Okay. They could so. type onto their picture, but they were very limited in space and I didn't, I didn't choose to use the, pic, the writing because they weren't able to write very much. There was about two words they could have written, so it wasn't really very much point in going further with the writing. So they could have, it could have been, the writing part could have been expanded, um, so they could have had a more of an opportunity to type in part, for example, labelling their pictures and so on, and maybe doing speech bubbles for the angels. So that would have been more useful if, the, if that facility had been available. OK, coming to you, Dan, as our subject expert, um, what do you think? The, the software is very basic and it is very easy to use on a variety of levels. It's quite easy to generate a fairly straightforward animated GIF and then it's easy enough to put it into other software like uh, Movie Maker for Windows uh, which will enable you to put scenes together to make quite a big and involved uh, pro, uh, animation. You can also use stop frame animation very easily, press the button, click on a, a simple webcam. So it is an easy program to use. The quality that you get from it is rather limited. 
So is this, is this something that could be networked across the whole school or is it just something that's sold on its own? Or? Well, it is something where if you, had, if you had it installed on a variety of different uh, comp uh, stations, then different children could generate different scenes, oh. which could easily be put together to make a much larger piece of work, which would be an interesting project mm. because animation is new. And if it's this easy, then it means that information and ideas and learning can be developed in a much more interesting way. It's appropriate for different learning styles, as you were mentioning earlier. You know, so it's not just people who write an essay, but I can go and make a, a cartoon about this. Okay. So I think animation has got a lot to give us. But one of the things that she alluded to on, in the software was the lack of writing capability for it. I mean, actually, it's not intended as a tool for writing. It is a tool for children to understand animation. But what that does by developing animated sequences or a cartoon effectively is give children an understanding of sequencing and maybe even developing character so that they can add little bits and pieces to the character that they're animating. But what that then does is actually help to enhance their literacy skills. So it has a knock-on effect. So if you're talking about the sort of potential for integrated learning, you know, using an animated package for art actually has lots of plus points for literacy too. What I thought was really interesting was um, the fact that when you bring ICT into a lesson like this, the teacher on the screen was talking about meeting ICT targets. She wasn't talking about art, she was talking about ICT. Now where does that stop and where does that start? I think it's a real challenge. Um, you know, uh, when you bring in a computer, uh, do you stop talking about your subject area and start talking about the ICT side of things? And it is, this programme is firmly focused on the art side of things. In our regular resource review roundup today, we have three alternative resources for your classroom. www.tate.org.uk slash learning slash kids is a free resource available on the internet offering activities and interactive resources ideal for primary children. The book, I Can Cut and Stick by Ray Gibson is available from Usborne. Written for primary children, this book is bright and colourful with a variety of activities and projects. The Dare Primary CD-ROM by Innova Middlesex University is written for 5 to 10 year olds. The CD-ROM features video, voices, drawings and other work by children and comes with supporting teacher's notes. OK Dan, um, we've seen a vast array of resources today, which if any of the ones you've seen would you put forward for a resource review recommendation? It's a difficult question, but I think Modrock is, uh, you can use that in any classroom, you need relatively little resources and it will fill a, a gap in the primary curriculum of, of allowing children to make large three-dimensional pieces of work. So I think uh, Modrock is, would be my recommendation at the moment. I think there's an awful lot of power across the whole curriculum uh, using animation and digital work, but then that's, res that's limited to to teachers who have the computers to do it. So I think I'll stick with Modrock for the moment. Okay, Modrock it is. You can find details on all of the resources that you've seen in today's programme on our website, which is teachers.tv forward slash resource review. And of course, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do that by emailing resource review at teachers.tv. So all it remains for me to do is to thank our panel for being here. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time at Resource Review. Goodbye.